the likelihood of anyone watching this is pretty slim. Um, so today I wanted to cover some of the harder questions from section 3.1 and then also just remind you of the stuff that we did on the calculator yesterday. So I brought a few calculators in here today if you need to grab one. Um, section 3.1 again was called linear functions. yesterday and there was one question at the end of class that I didn't get a chance to cover so I'm going to cover that one first it's super easy um, and then I will just review um, there's like one question on there that that was kind of hard that has like a fraction in it on the homework um, and then I wanted to again show you that um, that little the steps that you do on the calculator so this is the one that I didn't get to finish at the end of class or I didn't get to start um, so we'll call that number one so it says find the linear function with the following properties and then it gives you these two properties yours will look almost identical to this um, the only things that will be different on your homework are going to be this number right here and this number right here so you'll have a different number in those two spots everything else will look the same um, so you'll all have a zero in that one spot so it'll all say f of zero for everyone's. And they should all be whole numbers like for the slope. All right, so like I said, this one is super easy. I didn't even realize um, we probably could have finished this one yesterday in class. I didn't realize how easy it was. So it says find the linear function with the following properties. It says f of zero is equal to negative five. And then the slope of F is equal to eight. All right, so we're going to use things that we've learned in this section as well as stuff from chapter two to do this problem. Um, so this right here, remember yesterday we learned that if you just use this definition F of X equals Y, you can match up and figure out which one is X, which one is Y. So here X matches with zero, Y matches with negative five. So that's the point zero comma negative five. Now this is a special point. Anytime you have zero as one of your coordinates that represents a special point on the graph. Um, since X is zero here, this represents the Y intercept. Right, so since X is zero, that represents the Y intercept. If the Y coordinate was zero, that would be the X intercept. All right, and so now just note that you know the slope and the y-intercept. So we can use slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. I'm guessing since they use the words find the linear function, that they probably want you to use f of x instead of y. So they probably just want you to use f of x instead of y. Um, but now we'll just fill in what the slope is, what the y-intercept is, and we'll be done. All right, so m is the slope. So m is the slope. b is the y-intercept. So that's going to be f of x equals, let's see, slope is 8. So that's 8x. And then y intercept is negative 5, so 8x minus 5. And that's it. This is not one that I would probably put on the test. Um, the next one that I'm about to show you is the one I would put on the test. But this was on the homework, and um, I thought it was an easy one. So. Let's look at the one we did on the calculator yesterday. Um, and this one will have different numbers. All right, so this will be number two. Now, for this one, you will have just any random combination of numbers here on your homework. So it definitely will not be like five and negative 12 and two and one. Um, it'll be something different. 
but you will do this the same. The steps will be the same. Find the linear function with the following properties. So f of negative, or excuse me, f of 5 equals negative 12, and then f of 2 equals 1. Um, this one is the one that I would put on the test. So let's highlight that. So this is going to be on the test. All right, so I talked about yesterday how we learned how to do this by hand back in chapter two, but there's a much quicker way you can do it on the calculator. Um, but the first thing you have to do is convert these to points. So convert to XY form. So again, you just write up here like F of X equals Y. And then same down here. And that'll help you identify your points X, Y. All right, so I can see here my X is 5, here my Y is negative 12, so that's going to be 5 comma negative 12. Here my point is going to be 2 comma 1. And that's pretty much all you have to do by hand. From here on out, we'll be using the calculator. So you, let's get our calculator pulled up here. And you'll have to, you'll want to either like write these steps down on your formula sheet or have them memorized. All right, so five, negative 12, two, one. All right, so you go to stat, go to stat, and then do the first option, which is edit. So you're going to hit edit. And then clear out anything you have in here. Remember how we do that? We go to the top, hit clear, enter. Go over here to L1, go up to the top, hit clear, enter. Remember what we don't want to do is go up to the top and hit delete because that's going to delete the whole column. So don't do that. But if you do, go down here and hit setup editor. You go back to stat, go to setup editor, hit enter twice, and it'll fix it. But if anything weird happens with your calculator on the day of the test, you can always like bring it up here to me and I'll, I'll try to fix it. All right, so we're going to put in our points. Um, X is going the L1 column, Y is going the L2. Um, so that's going to be 5 comma negative 12 and 2 comma 1. So 5, enter, and go over here, negative 12. And then 2, enter, go over here, put in the 1. So X is in the L1 column, Y is in the L2 column. All right, then once you have your points in here, um, we're going to go to STAT, go over to CALC, that stands for CALCULATE, and then it's the fourth option, so for LINREG AX plus B. If you scroll on down, and you should, you probably are able to see it in your window, um, there's another LINREG down here, don't use this one. Um, it just it puts the slope in a weird spot. So this one is the better one to use, option number four. So this one is like in our in our normal like y equals mx plus b form. Right, so hit enter. Make sure it says L1, L2, frequency list, and then store reg EQ should be blank. Go down to the bottom, hit enter, and there are our um, our slope and our y intercept. We talked about this yesterday, how you could convert these over to um, fractions. So you would do like negative 4.3333333. Oops. Hit some delete. Or sorry, hit some negatives in there. All right, so go to math, frac. That'll turn it into a fraction for you. Negative 13 over 3. Let's see what my other number was. Nine point six 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 seven. Oops, I forgot to convert it to a fraction. All right, so twenty nine over three. All right, so negative thirteen over three, I think it was. Yeah, negative thirteen over three and twenty nine over three. All right, so y equals mx plus b. 
or they they wrote AX plus B, so let's do that. They said A was, um, was that? Negative 4.3 was, I wrote it wrong, 9.6. Um, hopefully you get the idea, and I'll pick numbers that are you know, come out to be nice whole numbers for the test. And then you just combine these and write it all together. And like I said the yesterday, you probably want to replace that f of that y with f of x since they say find the linear function. All right, so that was negative 13 over 3 x plus um 29 over 3. So I'll pick good numbers for the test. So you don't have to worry about that. But just in case that happens on the homework, that's how you would convert that to a fraction. All right, and then our last one I wanted to cover with you guys um, was this graphing one that we did at, um, I think it was the beginning of class we did this one yesterday. So this one says, consider the following function. I specifically wanted to do this one because you see it's kind of complicated. It's got that like fraction on the right hand side. So consider the following function, f of x equals 5x minus, and then it's 4 plus 9x over 7. It says find the slope in the y-intercept, um, express the y-intercept as an ordered pair. Um, that part's important. I was just looking at this this morning. Um, if you don't express it as an ordered pair, it's going to say something like your answer's in the wrong form. And then it says to simplify your answer. So we're going to do this part and then we'll go over to Hawks and we'll graph this one. All right, so just in case that one's hard to read, I'll rewrite this. Okay. <clears throat> Trying to think of the best way to do this. Um, so I think the best way to do this is going to be to um, split this up, split that fraction up on the right hand side into two parts. Um, the other thing you could do is get a, a common denominator. That actually might be the easier way to do this. Um, like treat this as 5x over 1. Um, so you could do it that way and get a common denominator. We'll try that way. Um, there's no like wrong way to approach this. There just may be an easier way and a harder way. All right, so if you were to get a common denominator between seven and one, of course it's gonna be seven. So we would multiply one times seven, that's gonna make them have the same denominator. Um, and then do that to the top as well. Whatever you do to the bottom, you gotta do to the top. Um, now we're going to simplify this or multiply through by 7. Um, 5x times 7, that's going to be 35x. Over 1 times 7 is 7. And then minus. And then we have 4 plus 9x all over 7. They just got parentheses around that numerator because they're trying to remind us that we need to distribute the negative. So that's what those parentheses are for. So we'll put it in up there. Don't forget to distribute the negative. So 
that's what the parentheses are reminding us. Now that they have the same denominator, we can just subtract the top, bottom stays the same. Alright, so subtract the top, bottom stays the same. Alright, now we're going to distribute that negative. So that's just going to change the sign of the stuff inside the parentheses. So that's going to be 35x minus 4 minus 9x all over 7. All right, so let's see, 35 minus 9. What's that? Is that 24 or something? 26. All right, so that's going to be f of x equals 35x minus 9x is 26x minus 4 over 7. We're almost done. Um, now we just need to split this up. We'll do f of x equals 26 over 7. Write the x to the side. So 26 over 7x minus 4 over 7. So you're just doing like this term over 7 minus this term over 7. And now you can see the slope and the y-intercept. So here's the slope. Here's the y-intercept. It includes that negative there. So we'll just write here. Slope. Y-intercept. So that was a lot of work just to figure out the slope and the y-intercept. You definitely wouldn't have anything this difficult on the test. So think about the fact that like, you've got to do the problem in five minutes or less. So <clears throat> I wouldn't ask you to do something this complicated. Would you get it wrong? Oh, I get it wrong. Oh. <laughs> No, I don't know. I just I I want to make sure that you have enough time to do all the like questions and not be like stressed out. I don't know what's going on top of my screen. Yeah. Yeah. If it took that long. All right, so let me show you how to type this in. All right, so let me scroll down so we can keep the answer up here. All right, so I'm going to jump over to Hawks. All right, slope and y-intercept. Slope was 26 over 7, so keypad fraction 26 over 7. Y-intercept. Uh, they want a little ordered pair, so you put the parentheses. Um, Y-intercept was negative 4 over 7. We know that the X value should be 0. X value is always 0 for Y-intercept. That's negative 4 over 7. You can put the negative like out here to the side also if you prefer. It doesn't matter. All right, so let's submit that. Okay. <clears throat> now, what I really wanted to show you on this problem was the graphing stuff. So it says find two points on the line to graph the function. All right, so first point that you should always use is that y-intercept. Um, let's see. I guess it wants me to type in the points here. Um, here's, here's my idea. Instead of like using your brain to find the two points, I would just plot this on my graph, graphing calculator, and then use the table to identify two points. So let's type this in our graphing calculator. 5x minus 4 plus 9x over 7. 
So go to y equals, clear anything out that you got in there. All right, then type in our function, which was 5x minus, and then in parentheses they had 4, what was it, plus 9x? Wrong one. Yeah, plus 9x close parentheses, divided by um, 7. Yep, okay. So once you've got that typed in there, you can go to second, second graph that's going to take you to the table, um, and then it'll pull up some points there. And then we can just kind of scroll through and find two points that have good numbers, like negative 2, negative 8. So we can use that for one of our points. So we'll type that in here, negative 2 comma negative 8. Let's see. All right, so you can see it plotted it for me down here. And then let's go back to our table. You can scroll through, scroll up or down, find another good point with good numbers. Even another one, 5, 18. That way you don't have to worry about typing in these long decimals or fractions. About 518. And then once you've typed those in, it'll automatically plot it for you and you'll hit submit. If it's um, like easy numbers to work with, usually you'll just click on the point. Um, but since this one had, you know, this weird fraction going on, they wanted you to type in the points instead. Okay, so graphing with Hawks is usually pretty easy, but sometimes you'll run into these weird problems where you have, um, you might have some difficulty graphing, but if you do just, you know, like take a screenshot of it, send it to me and say like, hey, I'm, I'm really struggling with graphing this one. Can you um, help me figure out what to do here? I'm happy to help you. Um, but it, it does help me if you like send a screenshot. That way I can, I don't have to like go all the way to Hawks review your work and figure out which problem it was. All right, let me stop this recording.